the tracing rules for path analysis can be used to calculate correlations for models. This same set of rules can be extended so that it applies to covariances as well. Let's take a look at how we calculate covariances using the path analysis tracing rules. This explanation from Wikipedia is a bit complex, but we can see that the two-headed arrows play a bit of a special role in these additional rules that we need to apply for tracing covariances. I will not read you out these rules, but let's just take a look at how we actually apply path analysis tracing rules to covariances. Let's start with this simple model. And uh, one of the problems with this simple regression model is that there are not many two-headed arrows that we can trace with. What we need to do first is to make the variances explicit. So the idea of a two-headed arrow that is uh, that it can quantify either a correlation or covariance, which it does here, but we can also use two-headed arrows to quantify variances or, or show variances in that, this kind of path diagram. So a variance is simply a variable's covariance with itself. So we can add these variances of x1, x2, and x3, and the error term to be, uh, make the variances more explicit. Then uh, we can start tracing. So I'll just show you the result. And how do we come up with that result? If we want to calculate the correlation, or sorry, the covariance between x and y, we start from x and we always have to go back until we hit a two-headed arrow and then we trace down. So uh, we trace for, uh, back, we are here, start with, so we take the two-headed arrow immediately and then we trace down to y. Same here, we can go from x1, two-headed arrow to x2, back, x1, two-headed arrow, x3, and then down to y. So we trace always backwards uh, to the previous, to the closest two-headed arrow, or we can start with a two-headed arrow and then we trace forward. When we calculate the variance of y, things are, the equation is a bit more complicated. So we start from y, we trace up to x1, then we turn around, we take that variance here, we go to y, then we trace to x2, we turn around using that two-headed arrow, we go back to y, x3, two-headed arrow, back to y, and that gives us the three first lines of this equation here. Then we do the covariances like we would do correlations using the normal uh, path analysis tools without the covariance extensions, and then we just add the variance of the error term. That gives us the variance of y. So it's pretty simple when we have a regression model. When we have a multiple equation model like mediation model, things get a bit more complicated. One problem is that when we estimate this kind of model, we estimate the variance of x or we, we take that from the sample, we estimate error variance, we estimate that error variance, but the variances of y and variance of m are not model parameters. What that means is it's not important in the context of this video, but if you apply a structural equation model software, for example, it doesn't tell you what is the variance of m. It's not part of the model. You can calculate it afterwards. But because we work with observed variables here, we know the variance of m and we can just mark it here in our path diagram because it's a known quantity. And that simplifies the path tracing. We would calculate the covariance between m and y by starting from m, we take the variance of m here and we trace down to y. Then we start from m, we trace up to x, we take the two-headed arrow the variance of x and then we trace back down to y. And that gives us the variance. The variance of y is, is given by this equation. How it works is that we go from y, we go to m, we take the two-headed arrow, the variance, we come back, we uh, travel to x, we take the two-headed arrow, we come back to y, and then we go up, we take the two-headed arrow from x, beta m1 and beta y2, so we can come back the other way, and then we can go also up m, x, two-headed arrow, and then start tracing down. So we always trace back until we find a two-headed arrow, and then uh, we take that two-headed arrow, and then we start tracing down. So first up, then two-headed arrow, then down, or we can start with two-headed arrow and then go straight down. So that's basically how the rules are applied. So this was uh, a simple way of uh, using the shorthand of, of assuming that we know the variance of error.
But if the variance of m is, is latent, if m is, for example, latent variable, then we would know its variance. And uh, then we are a bit, uh, in a bit more complicated situation. So we can also apply these uh, rules in a different way that is more general, but it's uh, slightly more complicated. So we can also calculate the covers with m and y like that. So we would go from m and we go up to u m. We take the two-headed arrow, the variance, we go down to m and then we go to y. So we trace up from m, we take two-headed arrow and then we trace down. We go from m, we go up to x, we take two-headed arrow and then we come back down to y. So that is the second uh, line here. Or we go up, two-headed arrow of x and then down to y. So that's the third line. So, so we can travel to these uh, exogenous variables if we start from this endogenous variable m. So the endogenous variable is a variable which has an incoming path and exogenous variable is a variable that doesn't have an incoming path. I use the green and orange colors on my slides to indicate exogenous and endogenous variables in path diagrams. The variance of y is given with this kind of equation. So uh, how we calculate that or trace that is that we first go, uh, we go to, uh, to uh, m, u, m and back. We go x and back. We go x, beta m1, beta y2. We go the same the other way around. And then we go x and back. And then we go u and back. And that gives uh, the variance of y. So we always trace to all the exogenous variables. We turn around that exogenous variables, including error terms, and then we come back to the, the, uh, the dependent variable y, whose variance we're interested in. This kind of tracing is uh, related to something that econometricians call reduced form equations. So the idea of a reduced form equation in this kind of path diagram is that all endogenous variables can be expressed uh, as linear functions, linear models, as linear functions or weighted sums of, of the uh, exo exogenous variables. So y is the sum of this error term, this error term and x, and here are the multipliers. And if you wonder where this, this two comes from, so why do we count this path when we go to x and then ba back, why do we count it twice? It comes because when we calculate variances, we always square the multipliers of the variables. And the multiplier for, for uh, x is this sum. And uh, when we square a sum, then uh, we square the, the elements of that sum, we sum them together, and then we add two times their product. This is high school math. Let's compare these two ways. So we have two different ways of calculating. We have the one that applies the reduced form principle that we go from, uh, from, from uh, all variables to exogenous variables, and then we turn back. And then we had a little trick where we use the fact that we actually know the variance of m from data, and then we can come back. So uh, does it mean that this, uh, this uh, covariance with m and y can take two different values? Well, no, we can reorganize this equation on the, this equation in a bit different way. So uh, we have just one line where we have beta y2, and uh, this part of the equation actually gives the variance of one. So we are actually just calculating the variance of one, then multiplying it by beta y2. So uh, this is how the path analysis tracing rules work for unstandardized models where there are covariances. One important thing to check always and to remember always is that each path must have one and only one variance or covariance. If you check that and then you include all variances and covariances into the model, we using the all possible paths, then you should get it correctly.